I didn't plan to tell anyone about this, much less anonymous users on an internet forum. But I've seen the other posts, and I have to come forward. I got pregnant at Disneyland. And gave birth there. Two days later. Splash Mountain, Kenny said, pointing up to the sign. You really liked it yesterday. Want to ride it again? Yesterday? We didn't go on that yesterday. Uh, yeah, we did. I shrugged. Okay, sure. I didn't want to get into an argument with Kenny. It was our honeymoon, after all. As we entered, nothing looked familiar to me. Not the path through the cave, not the hollowed-out tree trunk. And waiting in line wasn't exactly fun. I heard a father shouting, Renee, get over here, a few times breaking the mood. And this tall man wearing a fedora kept staring at me. He kind of creeped me out. We finally hit the front of the line. The water lapped around the sides of the boat. A thin drizzle of rain fell through the openings of the fake cave. Thunder rumbled in the background, distant and eerie. I didn't think it was supposed to storm, I thought. I checked the weather and it said sunny, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. How many? the cast member asked, but then his dark eyes lit with recognition. Oh, it's you guys again. Enjoying your honeymoon? I just... I just stood there at a loss for words. If we didn't go on this ride yesterday, how come he remembers us? We climbed into the boat. Front row this time, Kenny said excitedly, looking around at the water. But his voice sounded muffled, far away. The thunder rumbled again, closer this time. The pattering rain drummed in my ears like the throbbing of my heart. Chink, chink, chink. The boats climbed the hill, entering the cave tunnel. The sounds faded into the distance. As we sped down the other side, I felt a wave of nausea. Kara? Are you okay? I nodded, but as we twisted around the curve, I felt it again. I took a deep breath of fresh air. Just motion sickness? I thought. We slowly floated around a fake briar patch. I stared at it, trying to swallow the urge to vomit. The thick brown vines curled around each other. Thorns and leaves ran their length, adding realistic detail. Except for one. No. One was just a plain brown vine tangled up with all the rest. As I stared at it, wondering why the Disney artists had neglected that one vine, I, I saw it move. It wriggled in the water, almost worm-like, almost snake-like. I couldn't make out a head or a tail, a beginning or an end. The briar patch was swept out of view, and the boat careened through another fake cave. Are you okay? Kenny asked, but his voice sounded so far away. My eyes fell on more of the briars, poking through the cave ceiling. One didn't have thorns. As I felt the vomit rise up in my throat, the world faded to black. You're pregnant. I half expected the doctor to give me a tiny set of Mickey Mouse ears, or one of those big plastic buttons they give out for birthdays and anniversaries saying, I'm pregnant! He was a doctor for Disneyland guests, after all. But he didn't. He just smiled. You're about two months along, I'd say. Two months? I glanced over at Kenny. Uh, that's not possible. I'd had my period, I'd drunk alcohol, and most importantly, Kenny and I had only been married three days. We'd need to order a full ultrasound to get the exact due date, but that's my guess. He tucked the ultrasound probe away. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? No. No. As we left, he didn't even tell me to have a magical day. He instead hurried over to the phone and began frantically dialing a number. Must be a busy life, being a Disneyland doctor. When we got to the car, the fight erupted. 
Explain this to me, Kara, Kenny said. His voice was biting, hurt, angry. You're pregnant. You've been pregnant for months, but we just got married three days ago. Well, what are you implying? Do I need to say it? He turned into the hotel parking lot. The silence hung in the air, thick and heavy. This has always been a sore point with Kenny. He'd saved himself for marriage. I didn't. I slept with a few boyfriends in college, but I agreed to his little shtick. Agreed not to have sex with him until our wedding night. Apparently, that was a mistake. Clearly, the doctor's just wrong, I said. I swung the car door open. The warm night air blew over my face, through my hair. There's no other way. I didn't cheat on him. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to. Cutting out all sex for a year and a half is a hell of a thing, but I didn't do it. Kenny was silent. We went to bed without so much as a kiss. Kenny fell asleep in 15 minutes. I tossed and turned for an hour. At about 3 a.m., I woke up in the middle of the night to pee. I climbed out of bed. It was difficult. My body felt heavier somehow. Must be sore from all the walking in the park yesterday. I walked into the bathroom and flicked on the light. I looked in the mirror. I looked in the mirror and screamed. My stomach was round and full, stretching thin the fabric of my tank top. It bumped the countertop, even though I was standing a foot or two away. I looked six or seven months pregnant. Muffled thumps came from the other room as Kenny climbed out of bed. Kara? Kara, what's wrong? He found me in a crumpled heap on the floor, sobbing, my arms covering my distended abdomen. I slowly removed them. He gasped. I don't... I don't know what's happening, I sobbed. He lifted me from the floor, his hands on my belly. We have to get you to the hospital, he said, still staring. And then the thing kicked. My whole belly convulsed. Kenny pulled his hands away immediately, as if it was too hot to touch. And then came the pain. A sharp, intense cramp starting in my lower back and radiating to my stomach. I screamed again, and Kenny held me tight. A knock at the door. Oh, thank God! We hobbled over. Kenny pulled the door open. Please, call 911. My wife, she's... He stopped. On the other side of the door were not fellow hotel guests checking in if we were okay. No. They were some sort of operatives. Officials. Dressed in black suits, grim expressions on their faces. They grabbed us before we could blink, roughly pulled us by the shoulders down the carpeted hallway. I watched the paintings of Mickey Mouse go by, blurred through my tears. Where are you taking us? Kenny screamed. No reply. Save for the ding of the elevator. They pulled us inside. We rocketed down. Three, two, one, B1, B2. The floors raced by on the screen. There weren't any floors beyond B2, no more buttons. Still, the elevator kept going down. My ears popped with the descent. When the doors finally parted, we were looking into a dark hallway extending for miles. Take them to the park, the tallest operative commanded. We've got work to do. Hey there, kids, and happy October. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you a couple things that are happening this October that haven't ever happened before. First off, if you take a look at the channel, you'll notice that I'm currently live. That's right, we started up doing a Halloween horror radio program. That means 24-7 without interruption, you'll be hearing Creepypasta stories, read by yours truly, and as well as a few other guests that we've had on the channel before. The other thing are Halloween exclusive t-shirts. These t-shirts are available in the Mr. Creepypasta link down below in the description. Actually, at any point if you want to check out the description, feel free to scroll down and see what kind of cool stuff's going on down there. Oh, and of course, the Halloween countdown starts on the 18th. 
Look forward to seeing you all. And sweet dreams. <laughs>